Welcome to Rhythm Challenge. So here's our next Rhythm Challenge, and as you can see, we have two leads present, and you have to choose the best answer. So four different choices you have, A, sinus tachycardia, B, atrial fibrillation, C, ventricular tachycardia, or D, ventricular fibrillation. All right, so now just take a look at the rhythm strips, choose the best answer, and um, when you're ready, restart the video, okay? So pause the video and try to get it yourself, and then when you restart it, we'll go through this together, okay? All right, so hopefully you had a chance to go through this and uh, choose a, your best choice, okay? So let's just kind of go and look at what we have here. So again, we have lead two here. Remember, lead two is an inferior limb lead, okay? Sitting at positive 60 degrees. And this is lead V1, which is a right precordial lead, okay? So you have these two leads coming rhythm strips taken from a standard 12 lead ECG. Down here, what I'm showing you are the same leads, but now you could just have them enlarged. So in large portions of that, you can see those small boxes there that may help you with determining the rate uh, or looking for different intervals. All right, so let's look here. So again, choice A. We're gonna go through each one of them to make sure not only we understand what the answer choice is, the correct one is, but also why the other ones are not correct, all right? So let's look at these first, and then we'll choose our best answer. So choice A here is sinus tachycardia, okay? So sinus tachycardia, okay, it's a sinus rhythm, and it's a fast rhythm. So we have P waves that should be present, okay? We have lead two here, so we should see in lead two positive P waves, and then in lead one, we should see either positive or positive negative, all right? Meaning they would go look like that, okay? Lead two, they would look like that. Positive representing the right atrium depolarizing and then followed by left atrial depolarization, okay? Now, so the P waves are present in their sinus P waves, okay? And then we'd also want a rate that is over 100 beats per minute, okay? Always assume we're dealing with adult patients unless I tell you otherwise, okay? So those are some of the main things, and the P waves are upright in lead two because the normal P wave axis is between zero and 75 degrees, positive, okay? And notice that lead two sits within that, all right? So next, another thing let's know here with sinus rhythm is that this is oftentimes a regular rhythm, okay? Unless you have an AV block, right? So you can have a sinus rhythm with an AV block and that would make it irregular, but mostly when we're talking about normal sinus rhythm, you often see a regular rhythm, okay? And with atrial fibrillation, again, here, we're actually not going to see clear P waves, okay? The atria are fibrillating, so you don't have clear uh, contraction of the atria, they're more fibrillating, and that's why you have that, those waves. So no clear P waves there, but what really helps to identify it is this irregularly irregular rhythm, okay? So the regularity is very big with identifying atrial fibrillation. Now there's other irregularly irregular rhythms, such as multifocal atrial tachycardia or wandering atrial pacemaker, but the most common one that you'll hear and come across is atrial fibrillation. Okay, next we have ventricular tachycardia. Now ventricular tachycardia, as the name says, is a ventricular rhythm. So it originates from the ventricles, meaning outside of it, and that's why we have these wide QRS complexes we see with it, okay? Because you have slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization outside of the normal conduction system, right? It's coming from somewhere in the ventricles. And then we also have a tachycardia, so meaning it's a fast rhythm. So just like sinus tachycardia, over 100 beats per minute. And this is also a regular rhythm, okay? So, and one other thing is you don't see P waves. So how it differentiates from the, the sinus tachycardia, no P waves, unless you have retrograde conduction, okay? And oftentimes uh, you can see that, and it could be one of the hallmarks if you see AV dissociation with ventricular tachycardia. Again, something very difficult for even the experts to point out, but yes, we'll put that here, AV dissociation, okay? There's another, a lot of other things, a northwest access that you can see. You can see fusion beats, all right? And then, um, so there's a lot of other things aside here that we won't get into, all right? Because we only have these two rhythm strips and we really don't need all that to differentiate that, okay? But when differentiating between VTAC, okay? A wide complex arrhythmia, tachyarrhythmia, versus a supraventricular arrhythmia with aberrancy, those can be very difficult to 
uh, differentiate, okay? Now, moving on, ventricular fibrillation, okay? So again, a rhythm arising from the ventricles in there pretty much fibrillating, okay? So you have no clear complexes because the ventricles are just kind of going on their own, all right? And actually, that's exactly what we see here. So the answer we'll get to, and that's here is D, ventricular fibrillation, because notice you have these complexes in both leads. No clear P wave, no clear QRS complexes all the way throughout here, okay? Even if you look down here, it's maybe even better, okay? You just have pretty much lines going up and down, but no clear conduction, okay? No depolarization of the ventricles that's clear with, you know, another T wave that follows it, everything here is just kind of squiggly, all right? That's the ventricles fibrillating, not really conducting and squeezing well, okay? So this is not a good rhythm, okay? And one we do shock in, okay? Because this is often patients are hemodynamically unstable and have to be get out of this rhythm, okay? So this is actually ventricular fibrillation, one you want to see, and you want to be able to differentiate it from VTAC because VTAC, again, is a regular rhythm wide and fast, okay? Those are the main things for at this level I want you to take away, okay? And here, obviously, you don't see a regular rhythm. You just have these complexes going up and down, okay? If you can measure intervals, there's no clear interval to measure, okay? So that's why ventricular tachycardia is not right, not atrial fibrillation, because with atrial fibrillation, you may see these waves that look like that, okay? So you may see this, but then you'll see complexes, okay? So this is more atrial fibrillation, okay? So none of those intervals are the same, but then you have conduction, these QRS complexes, not very well drawn by me, but uh, that's what they're exemplifying. None of the intervals are the same. That's why it's irregularly irregular, okay? But you don't have, uh, you do actually have complexes that are showing up, okay? So often you have those QRS complexes followed by uh, T waves that follow them, okay? But here you don't see any complexes that are showing up. This is ventricular fibrillation. So uh, atrial fibrillation, again, is not correct. And obviously this is not sinus tachycardia because remember sinus tachycardia, we have those normal complexes that follow, okay? Here's a P wave, here's a QRS complex, also named an RS complex because this is an R wave and an S wave, and this is a T wave, okay? Let's just run through um, the normal complex because some of you have asked for it, okay? So again, pardon my drawing. So this is the P wave, okay, a normal P wave. This is our QRS complex, okay? We call this an RS complex because there's an R wave and S wave. Remember, R wave is the first positive deflection of our QRS complex, often following a P wave. And the S wave, this is an S wave and not a Q wave because it's coming after our R wave, okay? So make sure you can differentiate that. It's an S wave, first negative deflection below baseline after an R wave of our QRS complex. This is a T wave following, okay? Here's our ST segment, here's our J point. ST segment, okay, QT interval, PR segment is this, and this is the PR interval, okay? So the best choice here was ventricular fibrillation. Hopefully that makes sense. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. <laughs>